When I was in high school, we moved from Louisiana to Oklahoma. But for months, every weekend, I would drive back to hang out with my friends. You know, I could have put down roots here, made new friends, but I thought it was a better use of my time to drive 14 hours to hang out with a group of people who, when they saw me, said, didn't you move away? <laughs> it's a true story. One night, I pull into town, middle of the night, no cell phone. I realized I had forgotten to ask anyone if I could stay the night at their house. And then I remembered that my friend's dad lived there and was out of town. And I knew I could break into his house because nobody locks their door in Louisiana. We just realized a long time ago, thieves aren't interested in stealing those hanging fish, that seam that you put on the wall, or like frame crocheted Bible verses. That one hit a little too close to home. So I get there, and as soon as I pull up, I see his truck in the driveway, and I'm like, dang it, maybe he's actually here. So I got a couple options ahead of me. Number one, I can go forward with my plan. The problem is, if, if he's there, and he wakes up in the morning, and I scared him, there's a 100% chance I'm getting shot in the face. <laughs> Louisiana is a shoot now, ask, never state. <laughs> or option two, I sneak in, I go to his room where he and his wife are sleeping, I flip on the lights. If he's there, he's gonna be so confused, I'm gonna have time to run away. It's a genius plan. If you're 17 and an idiot. <laughs> so I go with plan number two. <laughs> I sneak in, I get to his room. I feel for the light switch I'm in total darkness. And I count down internally, three, two, one, I flip it on. I wish I could tell you and describe the sheer terror that flowed over my body as I realized that in that moment, there was a man standing directly in front of me. I screamed like a little girl. I started running like I have never run before because let's be honest, I've never run before. This is not the body of an elite marathon runner. This is the body of a television marathon watcher. <laughs> so I'm running and then I stop, something hits me and I go back to their room to confirm what I thought was true, that that man standing in front of me was nothing but a full-size mirror. <laughs> I scared the crap out of myself. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I mentioned that we moved to Oklahoma. We, we moved here because my parents got a job. In fact, speaking of my parents, my mom is here today. Give it up for Margo. I called mom and I invited her to the show. I hung up and immediately regretted it because I'm gonna tell some stories about you. Because I love you. When I was a kid, my parents were in the ministry. They were traveling children's ministers. Uh, churches would invite them in to put on big kids' crusades, family events, that sort of thing. My dad would teach lessons, and uh, mom and dad would do skits together. And my favorite one was this skit where dad is teaching on John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal. And he had made all of these uh, blocks of cheese out of styrofoam. And while he's talking, my mom comes out in a mouse costume, steals one, and scurries away. <laughs> The first time she does it, the kids are speechless. They don't know what to do. The second time, they attack her. <laughs> Just a pile of kids on top of my mom beating the crap out of her in a mouse costume. <laughs> Needless to say, they didn't do that sketch again. My parents have always been entrepreneurs. Years ago, they started a publishing company, help people write and publish their own books. And my mom is such a go-getter. And she'd call me and she'd be like, Adam, guess whose book we're publishing? <laughs> and I'd be like, whose? Do you know Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> like, of course, mom, everyone knows Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> well, we are publishing a book for his brother, Frank. <laughs> So if you'd like to read the memoir of a guy who was not Rocky, but knew him, let me know. <laughs> I think they got into publishing because my parents have always been, uh, this is true, they've always been amazing storytellers. I get a lot of my storytelling chops from them. My mom specifically, she knows how to pull the drama out of a story. She called me one time. This is so true. This is so true. She called me one time and she goes, Adam, 
have you heard about Lisa? Lisa was someone I knew 20 years ago. I go, no, what's going on? <gasps> you haven't heard about Lisa? I, no, mom, just tell me. I can't believe you haven't heard about Lisa. <laughs> For the love of God, mother. <laughs> Please tell me this information that I do not care about, but have to know. <laughs> well, as it turns out, Lisa. <laughs> makes the best cookies. <laughs> Sidebar, I had her cookies, not that good. <laughs> but she'll get you. Seriously, one time we had this friend, Bruce, family friend, very close to us. He got sick. He went to the hospital. During that time, I'm at home, wake up one morning. I come down the stairs to the kitchen. My dad is sitting at the breakfast table reading a newspaper. My mom is at the refrigerator. She closes the door very dramatically. She says, Adam, last night, Bruce died. I go, no. No. Yeah, he died. Thankfully, the doctors were able to revive him. He's doing much better. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. Bruce is still alive. <laughs>